Emoluments, so hot right now. Emoluments, Ugh. Yes, the Emoluments Clause of the Constitution has never been more relevant. Except, what is it? Well, basically, it's a bit in the Constitution that says American elected officials cannot profit from their office via gifts or payments from foreign powers, which seems to, you know, make sense. But it's very confusing. And that's where I come in. Or, more accurately, that's where CNN Business and Politics correspondent Christina Aleshi comes in. We're going to talk emoluments so that you can hopefully understand it, from the simple to the relatively complex, but always the brief. We've set a self-imposed 45-second-ish time limit to answer the 10 questions you need to know about emoluments but were afraid to ask. Here's Christina. All right, let's start simple. This emoluments debate, it's huge in this presidency. Has it ever even been medium with past presidents? And if not, why not? No, not to this degree. The debate hasn't raged like this, and it goes back to what I call the original sin, mm -hmm. which is the president's refusal to really you know, meet the demands of the ethics community, the, the, the ethics professionals, shall we say, and put his financial empire, his uh, real estate empire into a true blind trust or completely divest, which, you know, he was really never going to do. Christina, let explain to people in the YouTube world, explain to them what a blind trust is and why what Trump has isn't a blind trust with the note that Don Jr. and Eric Trump, his two sons, run his company currently. Go. Right. A blind trust is essentially a place where, in this case, Donald Trump would put all of his assets mm -hmm. into this legal structure that he couldn't really see into and he couldn't really control. And the way that he set up his trust, he does have ultimate control and he does get to peek inside and see what's inside of that trust. And it's important, I think, to note these are his two sons who run the company. How do you, do we police that conversations that, you know, they, they get together at Mar-a-Lago, we don't know. We right? don't know. And there isn't like an independent monitor that can swoop out yeah. of, you know, the, the corner and say, hey, what are you guys talking about? Right. You know, like, and report back to Congress or report back to the press as to what those discussions are about. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to hold the president accountable. And that's why so many people have a problem with if it. If you go anywhere downtown Washington, you see the old post office, which is now the Trump Hotel. This would seemingly be a place where if we were looking to see potential violations of the Monuments Clause, money being spent in ways that maybe was meant to influence Trump, we might see it there. Have we seen any of it? And are there any other places that are not here in Washington where there's, at least people have flagged potential dangers? Well, in these lawsuits, they do cite examples. For example, a lobbying firm tied to the Saudi government spent hundreds of thousands of dollars at the Trump DC hotel. So there are concrete examples. Do we know what those conversations are? Did the Saudis right. tell Trump, we're gonna spend a ton of money at your hotel, so next time you have a big important policy decision to make, consider that. We don't know if that's been done, but the emoluments clause and other kinds of restrictions were meant to remove those questions yep. from the debate entirely. You can't police this. And by its own admission, the Trump Organization has said it's hard for them to police totally. it too. Because it's not like they're going to ask every single guest who like checks in, guest list. Uh, right. what government do you work for? Do right. you work for a government? And they've said as much to Congress. <laughs> but there's also a legal piece to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us where, what it is okay. and where it is so in terms was, of legal status. There are three main cases against Donald Trump and they have been brought by a good government group, Crew, which has gotten a lot of attention um, and that was in front of a New York judge. The second is DC and Maryland bringing a case against Donald Trump and the third is actually members of Congress suing the president again over emoluments. But are there people that if you're not as familiar, and I'll admit I'm in this camp, not as familiar with this case, are there people we should be paying attention to when they say something it matters? Right now, everyone around this issue is laser focused on the three judges that are actually hearing essentially what boils down to is an appeal mm -hmm. from the government on this case with DC and Maryland. And these three judges, because I was in the courtroom that day, basically were grilling DC and Maryland, suggesting that DC and Maryland may have brought this action 
because of political purposes. Right. Asking questions that led everybody in that courtroom, including me, to believe that these judges were essentially accusing the, the attorney generals of Maryland and D.C. of bringing this case just because they don't like Donald Trump for political reasons. And politics, my thing. Yes. Where are we in that place as it relates to monuments? Because this thing is moving on a lot of different tracks. Nowhere. We right. are essentially... Well, that's like Congress we're at the summarized. point where like, people are starting to say the word emolument, which to me sounds like a yucky word and not really cool, and you deserve a better word than that. Yeah. So I like to call it like the anti-corruption clause. Right. I actually think Trump and and his group, uh, his allies and people who argue that this is totally fine, are helped by the fact it's yes. called emoluments, because no one knows what the hell that is. The framers essentially were trying to get across, hey, we don't want the American public to even question the president's loyalties. We don't even want that to be part of the discussion. So we're going to put these anti-corruption clauses in the Constitution. Problem is, they didn't define. There were no. There's not a defined term section. Has he ever talked about this? He. I feel like he talks and tweets about almost everything. But I. A quick. Uh, a quick search of emoluments did not jump out. He that is a really good point. He hasn't no. talked a lot about this. I think that's. He talks about almost everything I think, else. I think I see your next comment. Well, what do you think? I don't, I have I mean, to be honest, like, I don't know, right. and I'm not going to pretend to know here, but my guess covering Trump and this issue is that he doesn't want to draw any more attention to it. If you notice, yeah. what he tweets about is stuff that he wants people to know about. He doesn't really want to know about there, that there's a raging debate on whether he's violating the Constitution. He can't pin it on politics in the same way that he can do with Congress yeah. or the Mueller report, yep. you know? Can anyone make Donald Trump do anything in regards to Monument? Take the name, take Trump, etch Trump name off of the hotel in DC. I mean, what what is the what is the goal of the people who have brought this suit and is it at all plausible that that happens? You are on to something that is so critical. I'm so impressed by this question because uh, that is the precise question that the judges uh, that are hearing the DC and Maryland case brought up. Okay. They specifically asked the plaintiffs, uh, DC and Maryland, what do you want Trump to do? <laughs> do you want him to like sell his business? Get out and, the chisel, and the, chisel it or, off. Or take his name <laughs> right. off the buildings? And they did not have a good answer yeah. for that, which led everyone to be like, well, maybe this is political, like, because what kind of remedy right. what would make you feel Maryland and DC whole? Okay, last question, ready? Yeah. Fill in the blank, these are my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I was a big Mad Libs fan as a kid also now, but that's not important. Uh, finish this sentence and then explain. In April 2020, a year from now, in April 2020, the status of the emoluments case and emoluments more broadly as a political issue will be undecided. So I mean, like, appeal, 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 delay, stall, uh, throw. I mean, the Justice Department has already done this. They've thrown out like these wild hail mary passes uh, to the courts to try and get this case, you know, overturned and or kicked out of court, avoid discovery. And that hasn't worked so far, but my guess is they're gonna delay, delay, delay. And by the way, that means that if Donald Trump goes into November 2020, th this is all still going to be in place as he runs for a second yes. term. And litigated more if he wins Correct. for a second term. Ah, politics. <laughs> Thank you. And that's a wrap. And also, the point. Like our experimental format? Not so much. Let me know in the comment section. And remember, we make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them out.